Fancy. All right. So our scripture today <clears throat> comes to us continuing from the Gospel of Matthew. It is in chapter 25, and we pick up the story at verse 31. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples as he is trying to answer their anxious questions about what is to come next. Jesus has triumphantly come into Jerusalem they are thinking that they are at the precipice of conquest. Jesus keeps trying to explain to them that things are not going to go the way they think. They are days away now from his crucifixion, and they still do not understand. And they want to know what the sign is going to be that, you know, God has come and is conquering all. And Jesus is trying to tell them, how they should be living as they are waiting for that time. So this is what Jesus has to say. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in the heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. When the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. And I was a stranger, and you invited me in, and I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger or invite you in? When, or when you needed clothing or to clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whenever you did this for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me. You who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devils and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick and in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whenever you did not do this for the one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. I love for weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> oh my gosh, you art people, you're great. <laughs> Will you pray with me? <clears throat> our Lord and our God, we come to you this day, Lord God, not knowing sometimes are we the sheep or the goats. Sometimes we don't even know whether to be anxious about that. So God, this day we open ourselves up to you, to your word to the words that your son Jesus has for us through these Gospels that we might know with confidence our inheritance that has been given to us through your grace and by faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
There are times, um, and I've said this before, I think, that I can become easily startled, um, especially in my office. I can get very hyper-focused on something. If I'm working at my computer in the office, people can come into my office. They will be standing there, and literally they can be standing there for minutes before I even recognize something different is happening in my office. Many of my staff members have learned, if they're, especially if they're like wearing flip-flops, to like flip-flop loudly coming into my office so that they, I know that they're coming because sometimes my back or my side are to them and I'm working away and all of a sudden I'll realize somebody's there and literally, or they're, more often, they'll say a word and I will like, woo! I am like up to the ceiling tiles and just, you know, hearts going, pounding. Um, I can become like that easily surprised, easily startled. And I realized as I was reading this parable over and over again, as I was looking at this weeks ago, thinking about this parable, I had become hyper-focused in this parable from Matthew about how it encourages missional work, how it encourages the followers of Jesus to fulfill their God-given place as the sheep who do the good works as part of their salvation. I become, you know, focused on those, oh, those little nasty goats who haven't done one good deed for another person, just living for themselves. And then I realized that there is a startling revelation in this particular scripture. And I'm not sure that just looking at the scripture as an encouragement to go do good works is actually the focus that Matthew wants us to have. Because that makes us kind of slip into this place where we think we can earn our place into heaven. When actually salvation is given to us, and it says it right here in Matthew, it's given to us as an inheritance something given by God through God's good grace. So we can't earn it. So if we look at this parable as just telling us, oh, go do good things and you'll, you'll make your way, you'll transform yourself into a sheep. I'm not sure that that is exactly where Matthew and for sure where Jesus is trying to go. There's this detail that often gets overlooked in this parable. <clears throat> And I had to read it over and over again to kind of rediscover that. It's the surprise of both the sheep and the goats in this story. Both of the sheep, both the sheep and the goats respond to Jesus as shepherd king by saying, but when did we see you? Both of them say that. When did we see you? Both of them are surprised to learn that their action or their lack of action towards others was a place that they were meeting Christ. They gave little, little thought to the factors that were being considered in their judgment. Those who were the sheep didn't actually recognize Jesus in their midst. And those who were the goats did not recognize that Jesus was in the midst of those that they were not caring for. What both the sheep and the goats were missing is that God regularly shows up in those places and in those persons that we least expect God to be. Both the sheep and the goats get startled. It never crossed their minds that God was present in those who had a beleaguered life, in those that they considered to be least in life circumstances, in those who there was no account for or those who did not matter. They did not expect to have God present in those situations. So this got me thinking about those who we might see as unimportant. Those who we would normally give little thought to or sometimes pass with a blind eye, 
Are there times that you can think of in your life when something is just so regular and ordinary you don't see it anymore? At first it was shocking, but it happens so often that you don't see it anymore. You turn a blind eye to it. I know we do that often with those that we meet on the streets. I do it. Sometimes I don't want to make eye contact. I don't want to have that conversation. I don't want to feel guilty. I don't know whether I'm doing the right thing by giving them money or food or whatever's going on. And so I just don't look. That is what is going on sometimes for both the sheep and the goats. They don't know that God is regularly showing up in these places that we don't expect God to be. But the sheep, at least by instinct or whatever is going on, are still caring for those that are the least of these. This parable is a reminder that God regularly, even relentlessly, shows up where we least expect God to be. Not in Jerusalem or in Rome, but in the backwater town of Bethlehem, not in armor, but vulnerable in flesh, the flesh of a baby. That's how God comes to us in Jesus Christ. Not in conquest, but in a crucifixion. Not in power, but in weakness. Again and again. God in Jesus shows up where we least expect God to be and surprises us. He startles us. He disarms us, overturns our expectations and our judgments, and then invites us in to be in those places that God is as well. He invites us in not to go it alone, but instead to be a partner with Jesus Christ. To be another shepherd on the field to offer God's redemptive and surprising and uncontrollable love. The Gospel writer Matthew is not only speaking to the first century audience who needed a word of hope or redemption, but he's also speaking to us and reminding us that God is regularly and reliably showing up in those that we give little thought, in those who maybe we tend to disdain, in those who seem outside of the parameters of our attention or our good judgment. This passage is about where God is available. Not on some royal throne at the end of times, but God is here, available right here and right now. In every place we look, God is all around us. Which means that each and every day, we can encounter the sacred. Each and every day, we can encounter the living and real presence of God as we reach out to care for the needs of our neighbor and have our needs met in return. It wasn't lost on me that we had this particular scripture for this Sunday when we're in the midst of our first of two weekends of building homes down in Mexico and keeping alive the partnerships that we have with the people in those particular colonias down there. But one thing that I like woke up to, got startled by when I started doing the math, this is our 30th year. This particular trip was our 30th spring break working in that colonia, in those neighborhoods, building homes. But not only that, one of our participants this week, Chad Stewart, Chad was a sophomore in high school on that very first trip that we took. Chad was a sophomore in high school. He is now there today participating and building that home 
with not only himself, his wife and two kids. That's how we get surprised about the things that happen in our lives. We, Chad could have never known that going on that very first trip would lead him 30 years later to bring his family to experience what he experienced that first year. In fact, in that first year, there was a young boy who had been at our Futuro Center, where it was then, who didn't have shoes for school. Couldn't go to school because he didn't have shoes. Chad had only brought one pair of shoes with him. When he finished working, he gave those shoes to that boy so he could go to school. And now 30 years later, he's back building. Jack and Joel have been going down faithfully, built relationships in the Colonia, and now we have doctors who want to come and volunteer their time and put a clinic right on our property so that they can meet the needs of those who are around there. And we try and we try, this is the surprising part, we try and we try to give, give, give. We think we're giving more, but when we return, we know that we have been given more than we could have ever given them. Next weekend, we have another team. Many of you are here today that are going on next weekend's team. And you will experience, if you haven't before, that feeling of, I'm going to give. And then surprised when we return that you have received more than you could have given. This passage encourages us to recognize the presence of God in the needs of those around us. And we are invited to see God in those that we may even disagree with, in those that we might fear, in those that we have judged as untouchable, unredeemable. But it invites us to experience God's presence in those that are the other, those who we may not understand, we might not agree with their actions, but they are just as lovable to God as we are and just as redeemable. So as we get ever closer to remembering that time of Jesus as he shared a meal with his disciples, that last and final meal, as we will do this day with one another, as we remember him moving closer and closer to that crucifixion, we remember that God is surprising. And no bigger surprise is that resurrection. And it can happen for each of us all the time in our lives. If we are paying attention to meeting the needs of others, as we have been called to be the sheep and be surprised and startled by what that means with that work because we will meet God in so very many unexpected places. Amen. <laughs>